Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hi, Calvary. Today we're looking at James, starting in verse 1. And this is labeled a warning to the rich. And I just want to start off by any time in Scripture when it is addressing the rich or the wealthy, it is talking about us. Those of us that live in first world countries, especially in the United States, that is addressing us. We are the rich, and so we should pay very close attention to passages like these. So we're going to read some of the verses and see what James has to say. So starting in verse 1, he says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotten, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your silver and gold have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasures in these last days. In verse 5, you have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in the day of slaughter. These are some really strong words that James is addressing to the rich in this passage. He's talking to the people that own land. And these people are consumed with possessions, materialism. They're consumed with self-indulgence and just accumulating wealth. The way that they are so consumed with this is at the detriment of other people. They aren't paying the workers that are working in their fields, and they've actually killed some of the people that are working for them. And this extreme behavior, uh, James is saying, is going to lead to God's judgment against them. And so the way they are living their life, there isn't evidence that they are actually followers of Jesus because of how they are living their life and that there's no evidence of faith by their actions. And it all points to God's judgment in the last day. And so um, back in chapter three, James talks about how faith without works is dead and how we show that we have a relationship with Jesus is by how we live out our life. And so these people that James is addressing apparently don't actually have a relationship with Jesus by how they're living their life. And so this is a warning for us to examine our own life and our heart. And so I think there's two warnings that we can take from this passage and reflect on our own life. And the first one is, are we consumed with money and materialism or are we content with being a child of God? And this is something that's only between us and God. And so we can ask God to examine our hearts and examine our lives with how we live out our life and use money. Um, but the question is, if we are content with just being God's child, which is the most valuable thing that we can ever possess, does that reflect in how we live our life? So the second thing is, where are we storing up treasures? Is it here on earth? Or is it in heaven? Again, this is something between you and God to reflect on. And so just some ways of people say, well, how can I lay up treasures in heaven versus on earth? And the first way that you can start is just by being obedient to God by tithing. Whether you have $10, $1,000, or a million dollars, tithing is all the same. It's 10%. It's a percentage of whatever you have. And so you can start by laying up treasures by being obedient to God. If you're already doing that, you can take it a next step and give over 10%. Again, this is a conversation between you and God, asking him what he wants to do with the resources that he has provided you. See, there's nothing wrong with having money or living in America. God is the one who allowed you to be born here in this time and given you all of the resources that you've had. But the question that we have to ask ourselves with those are, are we living to indulge ourselves and store up treasures on earth? Or are we living to glorify God with the resources that he has given you? Some other ways that we can store up treasures in heaven is investing in kingdom causes, like sponsoring children through compassion. Um, you can give to build wells or build houses, um, the wells in Mozambique and the houses in Baja, or sponsoring youth and kids to go to camp. There are, those are just some examples. There's endless possibilities. And so I pray that you would take some time today and reflect and read this passage and ask God, am I using the resources that he's given me to glorify him? 
I hope you have a good day.